This is Josh Holyfield, and welcome to another episode of Make America Swole Again. A no bullshit, no sugarcoating, snowflake free podcast where I teach you how to step out of your comfort zone, stop dreaming, and start smashing your goals in fitness and in life. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Josh Holyfield, and welcome back to another episode of Make America. Swole again. I'm not sure what's going on over there on Facebook. But what I'm going to say is the the fucking... What I'm going to say is is that the show must go on. And so... From that perspective... um, I sent you guys the YouTube link. We're probably not going to have as much viewership here because most of the audience that we have, they come from Facebook. But, you know, we'll make do with what we have. And worst case scenario, if I have to go back and repost the video to my page uh, after the fact, that's what I'll do. So for those of you guys who are watching over here on YouTube, and I see a lot of you guys have already moved over. Thank you so much for doing that. Super excited to have you here tonight. There's a few things that I want to talk about. I'm really excited over. Um, And uh, I made an announcement. There's a huge, huge, okay, I'm going to say this again, fucking huge announcement. Um, Taking place at the end of this podcast. Okay, so if for whatever reason um, you guys aren't able to watch all the way through tonight, I highly, 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 highly suggest that you go back whenever you get a chance to finish this thing out because this is going to be a big announcement and you guys aren't going to want to miss it. Now, before we get into this, Um, I am also live over on Instagram. If you prefer watching on Instagram to YouTube, that's your prerogative. Just a heads up. I'm trying to give you guys as many different places to view as possible. Trying to get this streamlined. And it looks like I'm kind of going through some technical stuff to make all this stuff happen. But I don't want this podcast to be canceled. So here we are. Um, So first things first. James, Coach James, good to see you. How are you, brother? Jeremy Stevens, if you're watching, give me a a comment in the chat. Let me know you're here. Um, Jeremy Stevens, Facebook's acting weird. Yeah. Uh, Chris Hyde, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Uh, Chad Epps, always have you here. Kevin Lavelle, I think, Kevin, you actually prefer YouTube. You're one of my main YouTube watchers. I had Corey Malloy on here earlier. Corey, what's going on, man? It's good to see you. Uh, Let's make this fucking thing. Let's make this party. Let's get this party started. Um, So as you guys know, uh, current events. There's a couple of them that I think are are actually. There's one that I think is is really, really good that I want to spend some time talking about. (laughs) All right. So does anybody here know who Brittany Griner is? Anybody here know who Brittany Griner is? And so if you don't know who, who she is, um, basically Brittany Griner is the Texas WNBA player who uh, was arrested a few months ago for smuggling cannabis oils into Russia. Okay? So she was picked up by Russian Customs. Um, they stopped her arrested her, charged her with smuggling drugs into into their country, and um, was sentenced for nine years. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Okay. In the United States of America, we sit and we spend some, a lot of fucking time talking about white privilege, male privilege, this privilege, your privilege, that privilege. The fact is, and the, and the thing that a lot of these people who are even talking about privilege forget, is just the fact that you live in a country that has freedom of speech and you're able to say the shit that you say 
is more privileged than most people in the world have. Period. Brittany Griner is a phenomenal example of a spoiled, rotten American thinking that they can go wherever the fuck they want and do whatever they want and say whatever they want and behave however they want without fucking consequence because she's a minority and she's part of the LGBT community. I think the irony, the irony behind the fact that this woman was smacked with a nine-year prison sentence is about as good as it gets. Because she went from being the person who not very long ago talked about how she was going to refuse to stand for the national anthem for the entire season that she played basketball. Talking about women's rights and gay rights and this very active political activist using her platform as a sports star to claim that she was underprivileged and didn't have the same opportunities that all these other majorities has. And the fact of the matter is, is she's so fucking entitled... That she thought she could go into another country where that drug is illegal and smuggle it through their customs without consequence. And they were like, you do the crime, you do the fucking time. Here in this country, you do the, t- you do the crime and you do the time? Or excuse me, here in this country... You do the crime, nine times out of ten, you don't even do the time. And James, or Coach James, everyone's up in arms for her, but they have a cousin in jail. (laughs) They aren't using that same energy fighting for his weed arrest. Exactly. And so I did a quick search on Brittany Grimes, or excuse me, Griner. And the very, I just typed Brittany Griner in my YouTube or my, my uh, Google search. And the very first search that came up or the result that came up, the headline is Trump's GOP adds insult to injury as Brittany Griner remains. Okay. The next one, Brittany Griner verdict, conservative like conservatives like Trump side with. Okay. She's going to a not she's not just going to prison, she's going to a work camp. Okay? And so why am I sharing this? Because this week they tried to file an appeal to have her sentence suspended. And that appeal was overturned and they upheld the 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 uh the sentence. Okay? And all of these posts that I'm here here when I searched her name are these left-wing political media outlets talking about how she's a political prisoner. Once again, we have the media of the United States of America painting somebody who made a choice to break a law, do the wrong thing, go out of their way to think that they're entitled enough to get over and get away with their actions and didn't have consequence for their behaviors and now they're they are being painted as the victim every chance the media gets they look at these minorities these minority groups and they somehow overlooked the fact that this motherfucker thought that she was just going to take her weed into another country and make it through customs without suffering the consequences. And even if she was caught, there was no- nothing was going to happen. And now, because she made that choice, and she's being forced to suffer the consequence of her action, 
She's the victim. She's a political prisoner. She's this. They're targeting her because of this. She's black or she's a lesbian. So she should get the... The fact of the fucking matter is, is, is... It's black or white. You do the crime. You do the time. Period. You would not be in a position to be a victim... Unless you had, had made the choice to violate or break that law. Period. If you are so concerned with being a victim, and this is, and you know that the, that the country that you're going to, or you are under entitled, or you don't have the privilege that all these people have, then you would think that since you're so fucking hyper aware of that, that the fact that everybody's making your life harder and they're looking at you through a microscope, that you would be on your on better behavior. I don't, I, I don't know, just a thought, right? So, like, if I got my hand, if I got caught with my hand in the fucking cookie jar, the next time I go to get my hand in the, you know, get a cookie from the cookie jar, I'm going to try to be extra careful that I don't get caught again. Just a thought, right? And so the other thing Kyle says, who thought it was a good time to go to Russia? <laughs> like, I don't recommend backpacking in Iran. And so here's the other thing. And this is kind of something that I wanted to, to touch on. There are a lot of... <laughs> there are a lot of veterans who spent time in Iraq, who spent time in Afghanistan, who spent time in the Middle East, Syria. Um, I have people that I've worked with who've been in South America... The U.S., the U.K., Australia, and New Zealand are basically, in Canada, we call that Five Eyes, if you're familiar with military lingo, Five Eyes, are the only countries in the world who are tolerant the way that we are. Where social justice and equal rights and all the things that we see being pushed in the and the media are even a fucking thing. I don't know if you guys know that. Like, go to, go to fucking Somalia. And start talking about social justice and equal rights for women or minority groups in that country. And you'll see how fucking far that takes you. Go to Russia. Start talking about that. Go to China. Start talking about that. Go anywhere in South America, anywhere in Africa. This shit doesn't exist except in the UK, United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. We, as Western culture is what you would call that, are so fucking entitled. And so far disconnected from what's happening in these countries, like in the Middle East... That you think the problems we have here are bad with people not with the wage gap and, you know, abortion and all these hot button topics that people are talking about. You think it's bad here? Go to Afghanistan. Start talking about equal rights in Afghanistan. Start talking about social justice in Afghanistan. Go to Russia, start talking about that. Guarantee your shit won't be as tolerated and what you thought as far as this as this country is concerned is your lack of, of, of freedom and your freedom of speech and censorship and all the things that you're facing here. It's ten times worse there. If, as a woman, you choose to violate the shari uh, Sharia law in the Middle East, especially in Islam cultures, uh, conventional Islam cultures, you will be killed. Period. I've seen it. And so, this Brittany Griner, 
who's filing these appeals and trying to get the Biden administration to negotiate for her release and go through all this stuff. She pled, pleaded guilty for smuggling drugs into, the, into their country. She chose to do that. She made the decision that that's what she was going to do. And now she's having to suffer the consequence. And our society is painting her as a victim. She is not a victim. Do not be fooled into allowing the world to fucking show you that playing the victim card is okay because it's not. You have to understand that if you are willing to fucking behave a certain way, there is an action. There is a consequence, excuse me. And so this kind of takes me to one of my favorite books that I want to read a caption from. And this is um, from uh, the book Strong, uh, Hard Times Create Strong Men. And this book is written by Stefan Arnio. I've talked about it on previous podcasts. Okay, and Stefan, and Stefan Arnio is actually uh, passed away in uh, May of 2020. But he's, this book is phenomenal. It's changed my life. And I'm actually just made the commitment to myself that I'm going to read this book again. I was actually given this book by a dear friend of mine named Will. And uh, the first time I read it through, it was just like, it was an eye opener. Okay, if you haven't read Hard Times to Create Strong Men by Stefan Arnio, highly, highly suggest that you do it. You can get the audiobook from his website. He doesn't even charge for it anymore. You can actually listen to it for free if that's what you want to do chapter by chapter. But here's the excerpt from his book, chapter 29, The World Belongs to Warrior Cultures. Okay. Societies are born out of intolerance. And they die when they become too tolerant to function. America was born as an intolerant nation, but has become an over-tolerant one. Tolerance leads to weakness, and weakness, and weakness leads to hard times. What is next for our weakened nation? Every single glorious empire has been taken down by strong, violent, and hungry invaders seeking the luxuries they lack. People who are poor, the have-nots, the frustrated youth of history have always attempted to rise up for a better life. The world and the future belong to warrior societies. Because good times create weak men who will ultimately be destroyed by the strong men outside the gates. Peace is unsustainable unto itself because we live in a world of haves and haves not and have-nots. Inevitably, there is a gang, a group of have-not men, out beyond the frontier. Hard times create strong men, and weak men create hard times. It is the inevitable cycle of life, where great empires are built and destroyed. Unfortunately, millennials are currently living in the era of weak men that drown in ephemeral pleasure and limited desires. However, strength and greatness are determined by oneself. And so this is the best time to seize everything you have ever wanted. What is this saying? What this is saying is that we now live in an era of weak men. And the reason we live in an era of weak men is because we've had such good times. Peaceful times. We do not live on this frontier of survival. There is no angry tribe of less tolerant men standing outside of the gates of our society, knocking at the door, trying to take what we have. Okay? But he says, peace is unsustainable unto itself because we live in a war of haves and have-nots. Inevitably, there is a gang, a group of have-not men out beyond the frontier. What that means is there is a less tolerant group of men out there who want to come and take what we have. That's what that means. 
that's the the cycle of life evolution and the growth of society over time the rise and the fall of a society starts with less tolerant men think about this think go back to what you learned about the american revolution why did the colonials defeat the british during the american revolution they were outnumbered and outgunned Because they didn't play by the rules. The greatest example of this, of this is the movie Patriot with Mel Gibson. Okay? Think about it. Guerrilla warfare. They embraced it. They fought the way that they wanted to fight. They didn't respect the laws of war. That were introduced by the British. Hey, everybody, let's just fucking line up and shoot at each other. And the, the team with, you know, no more people loses. That's the way that they did war back then. Right? Now, we live in, or at that point in time, they're like, we can't line up against these motherfuckers. Hey, ever so we have no choice but to come up with a way that we're going to win. And so what did they do? Guerrilla warfare. They hid in the bushes, they ambushed them, they defeated them. This is the same struggle that we as Americans struggled with fighting in Iraq during the war in the early 2000s. Excuse me, in the early 2000s. My battalion got fucking slaughtered by IEDs. I'm talking about we would be minding our own business on a patrol. And we would get hit with what, what they called an EFP. Which is basically a shape charge. Which shot a fucking uh, a molten spike of copper at the side of a fucking tank. And would blow the fucking thing in half. And, and in a tank, in an armored vehicle, it would create so... That thing would go through the armor of the side of the tank and create so much back pressure that it would pull everything out of that little tiny hole. And it would kill everybody in there. I've seen those IEDs blow up armored Humvees in half. The entire front end of it completely ripped off and everybody in the fucking vehicle dead. We thought that we were going to go to Iraq and they were going to play by our rules. What happened? They didn't. The Geneva Convention, not a thing. They don't have fucking rules. They're tying bombs to their fucking kids and, and sending them at us. They're driving cars at us and blowing them up. They had no regard for cat. Uh, you know, innocent casualties. All they cared about was killing as many Americans as humanly possible. And they had no regards for the rules that we, or the rules of war. And to be quite honest with you, a lot of the reasons why myself and a lot of the brothers that I served with struggle with PTSD from Iraq and Afghanistan was because it, they shattered our concept of what we believed was a healthy regard for the human condition. Like these motherfuckers had, didn't even care. They were okay dying in whatever means necessary to inflict as much harm as humanly possible to people that they didn't even know. Just thinking about it from that perspective, even it's been 17 years since I've been in combat. Actually... It's been 10 years since I've been in combat. It still blows my mind to think about it from that perspective. They have zero regard for the human condition. None. No respect for it whatsoever. That's what made it so hard. They were less tolerant. Rules and, and all that stuff. Geneva Convention, you know, uh, rules of engagement, all those things that we cho choose to abide by. That's just another way of saying that we are more tolerant as a society. 
a less tolerant society, a.k.a. the people, the Taliban that we were fighting in Afghanistan and Jaysh al-Mahdi and all those terrorist groups there in Iraq and Afghanistan, they're less tolerant. That's why terrorism is such a scary, uh, scary thing. Because their, their rules don't, our rules don't fucking apply to them. Right? And that's what he's saying here. And that's exactly the wake up call that Brittany Griner had was, I am so privileged and entitled living in this Western culture that I have no concept or idea of of what that privilege even looks like. And now that I'm fucking walking into a country that's less tolerant than the one that I come from, I'm going to try to pre- pretend to play victim. Nice fucking try. Z- I have zero, zero uh, sympathy for her whatsoever. So you think about that. Suddenly when you start looking at what the realities are for a lot of these countries all across the world, Things like toxic masculinity and um, these hot button social justice issues that seem to be plaguing social media are much less relevant or even, you know, it's not even, it's almost not even worth your time thinking about, right? So think about that. And that's, just, that's what I wanted to spend some time talking about. Like I said, and just to kind of go back here. Um, if you guys haven't already gotten the book, Hard Times Create Strong Men. Highly, highly, highly suggest that you go, guys go back. Grab a copy. Get the audio book. It'll absolutely fucking change your life. Mark, kind of like the kid that was... Uh, caned in singapore several years ago yeah i don't remember that exact Mm, james said fun fact google her from her career at baylor baylor uh her own coach who will be a hall of famer doesn't even speak on her because of her character yeah all right let's make a little bit of a transition here i'm gonna spend some time talking about a phone call that i had today um (laughs) james said efp math aftermath created so many nightmares i i know i know it brother um all right so not to go i'm not going to go back into war stories i could send start talking about all the crazy shit that we saw and the nastiness but again i don't want to do that here so let's spend some time talking about the phone call that i got today I'm actually really glad that I got this call. I'll be honest with you guys, man. Like, my body is starting to, um, it's starting to fight back, (laughs) for lack of a better term. I've spent so long just beating my body up. Obviously, service in the military, um, mixed martial arts, um, All the time that I spend in the gym, Um, I lift heavy, I work hard, I don't fucking take breaks, and I'm balls to the wall with everything that I do all the time. I've got injuries, I fight through them, it's just how I am. Now I'm to the point, this year I've actually hurt myself more than I ever have. Um, We're going on, this is, we're three injuries in. So we started with the biceps tendon rupture, um, and then I, um, what did I do? Oh, I, 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 uh, strained my hamstrings and then I also, I'm pretty sure I ruptured something in my elbow. Something's going on with my elbow. If I do anything on bench press more than about 365 pounds, I feel like my elbow is getting ready to just fucking collapse, snap. So I've got, I've probably got to go to the doctor and have my elbow checked out. Bottom line is, is I'm in a place right now where, like last week in the gym, I went to the gym. I didn't want to be there. 
I get like do my compound lifts, do what I needed to do to kind of maintain, not become a fat slob, get into the gym, get that you know maintenance amount of work done, not too much intensity, just going in there and kind of lifting and staying on top of it, keeping that habit. But I wasn't pushing the limits, wasn't lifting heavy. If you guys watch any of my workouts that I post on my stories on Instagram or Facebook, you may have noticed that I haven't really been posting as much. It's not because I'm not going, it's just because I get there and I'm mentally in a place where I'm kind of like, I need to start doing something other than lifting weights. Um, so we're probably going to look at starting to get into some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and kind of mixing it up a little bit, hopefully a little bit more yoga, increase my mobility and you know, focus on being a little bit more athletic versus just big, big and strong and, you know, brick shit house. Um, those adjustments will probably be happening here within the next few weeks. So mentally, I've just kind of been in this place and this is also kind of, this correlates a lot for a lot of people towards the, you know, end of the summer. Fall starts kicking in. It starts getting colder outside. Uh, the sun, the sun goes down earlier in the day. People are more tired. The quality of their uh, sleep isn't as good. And we just kind of come into this transition that typically happens during the October, November time frame where people kind of lose that momentum that they've built up throughout the year. I'm kind of going through that. This is completely normal. Okay, this happens. If you guys kind of feel like you're in a you know, slump, I can tell you right now, you're not alone. Okay. Now, with that said, I, I, I stayed consistent. Continued going to the gym, hitting it hard, doing my best to, to stay on top of it. Um, and uh, I'm walking out of the gym today. We had a really, really good workout. And I got a text from one of my clients. And he basically said, hey, man, can we do a quick phone call? Yeah, sure. What's up? And so for context, my client, he reached out to me yesterday. He's like, hey, man, I'm just kind of curious. How much does missing out on a night of good sleep really affect the quality of your workout? And I'm like, pretty significantly. <laughs> I would make the argument that, you know, getting a good night. I would make the argument that getting a good night's sleep is the most important without even any comparison um, as it pertains to the, the quality of your mental state, the quality of your physical state, um, your performance level, and also your ability to recover. Okay. If you have, it also affects your hormone production in your body as well as a slew organ function Mental function, cognitive function, I mean, all of it. If you're sleep deprived, um, everything begins to shut down. Okay? I can go without food and water longer than I can go without sleep. So there's your indication. All right? Um, so he had a bad night's sleep, texted me, how much is it going to affect it? And I said, pretty significantly, my advice to you is always prioritize sleep, nutrition, then lifting in that order. Okay? Those are the three most important. If you're trying to lose weight and create positive and sustainable habits and stay on top of your health and make your health a priority as a man, sleep, nutrition, training, in that order. Those are the most important. Okay? If you do that, you can stay consistent, you'll be healthy, you'll stay on track with your health, and you'll have a much easier time performing when you do lift. Okay? He's like, okay, cool. So uh, that was on Monday. Today, he, you know, again, he texted me and he called me. He's like, hey, man, you know, I tried to get a good night's sleep last night. Didn't do so well. I decided, though, today during lunch, I was going to go try and hit my deadlifts. And once again, I kind of hit a plateau with my deadlifts. I performed worse than I performed yesterday. And I'm kind of down on myself. Um, you know, what do you have to say about that? So I want you guys to kind of take some time to think about this as you've been on this, on this journey that you're on to 
lift weights, to get in shape, to be healthy, to eat right, to make your health a priority. I'm sure that every single one of you guys who's watching me tonight has ran into one of those situations where you felt like you were actually taking steps backwards, you're having trouble, you're perform you weren't performing as well, and all these things were happening. And you're it's kind of in the same boat as this guy, right? So I asked him, you know, when was the last time, or excuse me, um, I asked him, I said, why did you hire me? We've been hitting, we've been hitting PRs. Um, we've been working really hard to get you on track. You're lifting really, really well. You've been, since you started with me, we're going this way. Every week is better and better and better. We're going on week six right now. And pfft, you're kind of hitting a wall. This is what you hired me for. It's easy to go to the gym and stay in shape, stay healthy, lift, eat right. If I give you a plan and it fits kind of what you're trying to accomplish. That's easy. Where it becomes difficult is when there are distractions. When there's a plateau. When you start to doubt yourself. When you think too much, when your mind starts to take over and you, the weakness sets in and you start making fucking excuses and you start wondering if you're doing what you should be doing and your insecurities set in and uncertainty sets in and you start questioning everything that you're doing and if you're doing it right or how much you should be lifting or what you should be doing and and. And then you have family members and friends who criticize you and the world wants to criticize you and they pull you down and they jab at you and they, they, they make it even easier to create that excuse and want to fucking quit. I'm sure everybody, everyone who's listening to, to this tonight can kind of relate to that. If being successful, and it doesn't matter whatever it is, if being successful was easy, everyone would be fucking successful. And so I asked this client today, I said, what is the difference between a novice and somebody who's uh, intermediate? Experience. That's the difference. What's the difference between somebody who's intermediate and an expert? Commitment. That's the difference. An expert, somebody who's at the top tier, the best in the world at what they do, they've committed themselves to the process. They have not committed themselves to the outcome. They've committed themselves to the process. And they understand that progress is not linear. And they're not expecting to hit PRs every week. They enjoy the journey and the act of doing what it is that they do. And they love it so much with so much passion that they've made it their purpose. And they've chosen to pursue that relentlessly with 100% commitment. That is the difference. Most of you guys already know what I have to tell you. You already know the information that I'm here to share you on your workouts and your nutrition and staying on track and staying disciplined and having work ethic and being good fathers and husbands and leaders, right? You already know what's right. You know the difference between right and wrong. The reason why it's so difficult for you to stay on track and do the things that you want to do is twofold. And the first is because, A, it gets hard. It's easy to stay on track with something when it's easy. It's not until it becomes hard and difficult and challenging and you have to prioritize your time and make the time and overcome the obstacles and break through plateaus and deal with injuries and deal with criticism and deal with all the mental shit that comes with the pursuit of whatever the goal you have is that is going to it's not until you go through those things that 
you actually are starting to see the real progress and the real change. I've said this before on podcasts. When you're lifting weights and you're doing a set, your workout doesn't start until it hurts, until it burns, until the fatigue sets in. That's when your workout starts. It's not when you the first weight you lift. It's not the first weight you lift. It's when it starts to hurt. When you start questioning whether or not you want to keep doing it. When you start creating excuses in your mind. When you start doubting whether or not you can do it. That's when it starts. Most motherfuckers out there will never grow and become great because they quit when they started that path to greatness. Anybody can be decent at something. It can be okay. And even if you have a certain amount of talent, you can only go so far without commitment. So that's the first piece of perspective I want to give you on that. He was doubting himself. He was questioning himself. Why am I not strong, as strong as I was last week? This is I'm getting down on myself. This sucks. I gave him that feedback. The second piece of feedback I gave him is I said, when you hired me, I said, your goal wasn't to become a bodybuilder. You told me that. It was not to become a power lifter. It was not to become a better athlete. It was not to do any of those things. And I can tell you right now, okay, if I was coaching you to be a better athlete, as hard as I've been having you work for the past six weeks, it would probably be a good idea for us to do a deload week so that we can give your central nervous system a break. Okay, that's normal. But what you did when you hired me is you told me that your goal was to be the hardest, strongest, or excuse me, you told me it was the meanest, strongest, hardest to kill motherfucker that you knew. That's what you said. You said you wanted to be as hard to kill as possible. Well, I'm here to tell you that there are savages at the fucking gate and you guys don't even know they're there and they want your fucking dinner. And those dudes aren't doing deload weeks. They're not taking a break because they're fucking tired and didn't get a good night's sleep in their fucking comfortable little baby bed with their baby bottle last night. They are still working. And so if you told me you wanted to go fucking compete in a powerlifting competition or go stand on a fucking stage in a pair of skivvies and fucking have a bunch of other men judge your physique, the way that we would be training would be a lot different than the way I'm training you now. The way I am training you now is that when you fucking grab somebody, they know you're there. When you shake his hand, he winces a little bit. And if you have to, you can fold a motherfucker up. So keep that in mind when you guys are going through your training. You need to be very fucking precise and very specific about exactly why you're doing what you're doing. Because that is going to dictate the way that you train. If your goal is like me and most of the men in our community and you want to be the hardest motherfucker there is to kill, you don't get a fucking break. Period. (laughs) I wouldn't say that, Kevin. Kevin said the brotherhood of the less tolerant. The brotherhood, we're, we're the ones who are going to be prepared 
to let a motherfucker fuck around and find out. That's my goal with this. There's a threshold. And if you cross that line, if you cross that boundary and you fuck with me, you're going to have a bad day. As long as you leave me alone, you let me live my life, we're cool. The second you start convincing me that motherfuckers like Britney Griner are fucking victims, we're going to have some problems. The second you start to tell me how many rounds of ammunition I can have or the size of the fucking magazine that I have in my assault rifle or even the type of rifle that I own or firearm that I own, that's when we're going to have problems. The second you tell me how to raise my children, that's when we're going to have problems. The second your values and your belief system that I don't agree with cross the threshold of my fucking home or are taught to my children without my consent in schools, that's when we're going to have a fucking problem. You let me live the way that I want to live and don't force your bullshit down my throat or try to indoctrinate my children and we're cool. But I don't care what anybody fucking says. A pedophile is a pedophile and they deserve to go in the fucking wood chipper. Anybody who says anything less deserves to go with them. That's right. Mark said it perfectly. There's no time out when you're fighting for your life. Number one villain shirt. Something is better than nothing when it comes to your training. You're not always going to be perfect. Your progress is not going to always be linear. You're not always going to be getting better and growing. The days where you can't perform your best, the days where you're not mentally there, where you don't want to show up, where you're not motivated... The days where you're second guessing yourself and your weakness starts to creep in and your insecurities and your doubts and your uncertainties and all that shit starts to pile up. The day where you're starting to feel fucking sorry for yourself. The day where you're looking for somebody to appreciate you or validate you or give you a pat on the back and tell you you're doing a good job because you feel like your life is so fucking hard. The day, those are the days when you show up and you give it your all. Even if you didn't perform as well as you would have at 100% and you still showed up, those are the days that are going to make you a man and make you as the man that you want to be. I asked him, I said, what did you deadlift last week? He said, 385 for reps. What did you deadlift, what did you deadlift this week? 365 for reps. That's 365 pounds more than the next fucking guy. Being a high value man in today's society basically comprises of showing up and being consistent. Can you do that? If you're in the top 10%. To get in the top 1%, all you have to do is show up and be consistent even on the days where you don't want to or where it becomes difficult. Fuck your feelings. They don't get a vote. (laughs) That comment right there changed my workout today. Chris Hyde. Hell yeah. All right. So on to this big announcement.
This is a big deal. Josh Holyfield PD is moving. Starting Friday, we will be putting our house on the market. We're selling our home. We've been doing a lot of work in here to get it all up and ready to go on the market. We've got uh, a, we've got the painting guy came, the cleaning people came. We have carpet cleaners coming tomorrow morning. We have um, a roof guy coming Thursday, and then I have a photographer coming Friday. He's going to take photos with my realtor here. On Friday, we're going to get those photos edited and put up on MLS. House is getting fucking sold. Good news is, is we're going to make some money off of it. It's going to be a nice little piece, chunk of change that we're going to be able to take and invest back into, invest back into the, uh, into the business and, and the family here. And, um, uh, I made the decision that, you know, we're going to be moving down towards uh, the Savannah, Georgia area. So though, for those of you guys who are out that way, Charleston, Savannah, kind of that area down there. Um, you're going to have a new gym that you get to work out in. We're going to take some of the money that we earned from the uh, sale of the home and invest it back in. And we're going to open the very first Iron Forge gym. It's going to be Josh Holyfield's Iron Forge. Obviously, it's going to be a, a few months before we find the location, get the equipment, get everything put into place. But we're probably looking at like beginning, you know, March, April 2023. This thing's going to open. We're going to do a great big grand opening. Now, here is the cool part. Okay, this is the cool part. Check this out. Okay. I am going to take the in-person coaching Iron Forge gym that we're building. And I'm taking what we have here as the online coaching and the uh, mobile app and all the programs that are offered here. And we're going to make them one and the same. So if you have a membership to the Iron Forge, you also have a gym membership. Okay. The only exception to that is if you are a lifetime member to the Iron Forge, you will not get a membership to the gym because that's insane. I'd be basically fucking giving away a gym access for free. Okay. So, Iron Forge membership, gym membership together. We'll probably increase the price of the Iron Forge. There will be an online only option and then there will also be a, a, you know, we'll talk about the logistics. But the idea behind this is, think about it from this perspective. How many gyms have you gone to where it looked like this? Okay. I go in. I sign up for a gym membership. And with signing up to that gym membership, I get a mobile app with a program to follow while I'm there. A personal trainer to offer me advice to make sure that I'm doing what I need to be doing. The mobile app has all the features that my mobile app has with their training guides and where I can track my workouts and the video guides and how to do the exercises. Oh, and by the way, we're going to give you a nutrition plan to follow. We're going to teach you how to eat. And we're going to give you access and immerse you into an online community of thousands of other people who also use the programs. Okay, so that's one end of it. If I decide that I want to do personal training, guess what that is, guys? That's my one-on-one -on -one coaching that I already offer and my team already serves to thousands of you guys already. So then if I, what I can do is, is my one-on-one -on -one coaching isn't just going to be some asshole personal trainer following me around for a minute and me paying him a hundred bucks to fucking walk me through a workout. It's going to be, I get 100% custom meal planning. I get 100% custom uh, program to follow. I get accountability from my coach. I get my weekly check-in where if I want to, I can come and sit down with my coach in person 
and go through my stats, go through my logs, go through my nutrition, go through my progress and work with him to optimize my program so that the following week I'm able to get better and, and improve the progress that I'm seeing and get more efficient results and, and maximize the likelihood that I'm going to build a high quality sustainable habit for myself. So the old way of doing personal training was I need somebody to help me get in shape because I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to go hire this guy to follow me around the gym and he's going to charge me 60 to to $100 an hour. The new way of doing it is, hey, you pay us a flat rate. We're going to give you access to a program. We're going to teach you how to eat. We're going to give you access to accountability. We're going to immerse you in a group, a community online to stay accountable to. We're going to give you check-ins with your personal trainer. And if you feel like you need in-person sessions, you can, uh, we'll give you uh, so many of those per month. And then what we'll do is we'll check in with you every week to make sure that you're staying on track. How does that sound? What I am doing here with my gym and combining the online and the offline is I'm going to change the face of the fitness industry forever. And you guys are going to be on the front and front on, on the cutting edge of this. Nothing like it has ever existed before what I'm talking about. Not that I've seen. Who's fucking pumped? Let me get some comments in the chat. Let me know what you guys think of this. Chad, awesome. Can't wait till I can come down and work out one of these days. Bear, I guess we're all moving. <laughs> Kyle, always leveling up. That's right. Get ready. He's coming. Hell yeah. Coach James is moving. Bring them all. Flexi Lexi. Bring her. I'm excited, guys. This is going to be cool. And so um, we're looking at, like I said, hopefully the house will sell within a few weeks. It'll be quick. 30 days closing. We'll get down there, get into a new place before Christmas. As soon as that check clears, we're immediately shopping for commercial real estate, looking at where we can put, get a lease signed and move in. And once that happens, we're designing the place and we're taking the fucking jackhammer and the sledge and we're going to build a badass Heavy metal, clanging and banging, old school fucking gym with diamond plates and fucking all the fucking equipment that you guys need to go in there and fucking get loud. Okay? I'm going to fucking get a lunk alarm and I'm going to put it up on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a fucking battle axe that's thrown through the middle of it. What do you guys think? <laughs> hell yeah we'll get a big huge battle axe and we'll have one made and have that lunk alarm and have that axe right through the fucking middle of it and I'll, I'll spray paint over the top of it that says get fucking loud cause if you guys have ever seen me in the fucking gym dude woo we get hype Maybe uh, hit a Viking leg day if y'all smile pretty. <laughs> Let's make it happen, boys. Anthony, that's a badass idea. That's definitely original. I'm excited. I'm excited. And so uh, I wanted to share that with you guys tonight. Like I said, the Iron Forge folks, they were the first to hear about it last week. I decided this week that I was going to get on there and... Uh, or get on here and share that announcement with you guys. Hopefully you're excited. Hopefully the podcast was entertaining for you guys tonight. Hopefully it gave you guys a little fire under your ass. You're ready to go fucking get jacked and juicy. And one more time before I let you guys go. Hard times create strong men. Stefan Arneo. Get yourself a copy. You guys have a phenomenal evening. God bless. I will see you next week or Thursday for the Iron Forge if you're part of that. Stay vigilant. See you soon.